Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a DJ Hall of Fame member since 1999. Currently in his seventh decade of broadcasting and still active as part of the KFKF Kansas City Air Staff, Ted Kramer. Hey, Ted. The only problem was they installed it in my right arm. <laughs> Big trouble. Well, it's not every day that you get a chance to induct your old boss into the Hall of Fame. And what a thrill this is. Our next inductee was the forerunner of all country group radio stations. He was the first to put together a group of radio stations in large and major markets that played country music exclusively. Cy Blumenthal took the plunge when country music was considered to be just hicky hillbilly music played by small, low-power, daytime radio stations in small markets. But Cy saw beyond that perception. While the audience was responsive, advertisers were generally not anxious to buy the format. It took a man of strong vision to say, we have something good here. We will be successful, and here's how we're going to do it. In time and in each market, audience levels grew, and the stations became successful. Cy was a real pioneer in every sense of the word. He joined his brother-in-law in 1951 to learn the radio business in Chester, Pennsylvania. He learned quickly and saw the opportunity that the country format presented. Later in that same year, he bought WARL in Arlington, Washington, D.C., and turned it country. Within eight years, he had a chain of five radio stations, all playing country music, and importantly, making money. Part of that success was Cy's keen awareness of aggressively marketing his radio stations, using newspaper and billboards. After WARL, Cy bought WCMS in Norfolk, WHMS in Memphis, KCKN in Kansas City, and WABB in Mobile. I worked for Cy at KCKN, and it was in 1959 that we became a pioneer in modern country radio by introducing the fast-paced countrypolitan format. Under Cy's mentoring, many of his young associates went on to achieve major success in their fields. George Crump bought WCMS from Cy. Connie B. Gay, one of the first personalities on WARL, went on to organize the Country Music Association, the CMA. In his own family, Cy's son-in-law, Steve April, learned sales at KCKN and later worked 16 years at Stores Broadcasting. Steve was in sales at WQAM in Miami, then became sales manager at KXOK in St. Louis during its top 40 heyday, and Steve then became sales manager at KMOX. Cy's daughter, Edie, worked at WARL and KCKN. This is truly a broadcasting family. Many young major performers first performed live on his stations, Jimmy Dean, Roy Clark, Gene Vincent, and many others. Many of his announcers have been honored in the business, including Don Owens, Joe Hopple, and Uncle Don Ray. Joe, Don, and yours truly are in the DJ Hall of Fame, and we owe our early breaks in this business to Cy Blumenthal. In 1965, Cy sold his last station, KCKN, to Lester Smith and Danny Kay, and retired in Miami. In 1968, he became a director of the North Miami Bank. He died in 1983. On a personal note, what a thrill this is for me, not only was I the program director at KCKN-FM when Cy put it on the air in 1963, I've been privileged to come back to work on that station for the past six years. And of course, you know the call letters now, KFKF. And I'm proud to say the station has always been country, 47 years, the same format, without interruption. Cy left. Cy's family is with us tonight at table three. Daughters Edie April and Lois Blumenthal and son Steve April. Son-in-law Steve April. Cy's grandsons are with us as well. Dave April and Ben April. 
Now it is our pleasure to welcome Cy Blumenthal into his rightful place in the Country Radio Hall of Fame. And accepting the award, Cy son-in-law, Steve Aker. Thank you very much. Ted talked about Cy Blumenthal and his accomplishments. I'd like to talk a little bit about Cy Blumenthal, the man. I first met Cy in the fall of 1956. I was in my third year of college, and this was my very first date with his daughter. At that time, Cy gave the impression of being taller than his 5 foot 10 frame. He was of moderate build, and he wore his clothing very well. However, his most dominant feature was his voice, a strong voice, a baritone voice, a commanding voice. Later, when I knew him better, I saw that he had a great presence. When Cy walked into a room, he held that room. Cy was the finest businessman I have ever known. He had the ability to instinctively size up most any business situation with only the barest of facts. He could carry and compute numbers in his head far beyond anyone I've ever known before or since. In short, if you were playing cards with him at that time, you might think twice. So I had two passions. First, of course, was his family. His beautiful wife, Hannah, married for 47 years, who kept this dynamo in check with just an occasional gentle criticism. Of course, his two daughters, Edie and Lois, and his three grandchildren, Two of them are with us tonight. His second passion was his radio family. Now you can't build anything of consequence unless you have really good people to work with. And he really had good people. Cy was known to most of his staff as Mr. B. And his staff was truly Mr. B's second family. And Ted has mentioned some, but I'd like to mention some of the same people. I'd like to talk about George Crump, Cy's right hand who later bought his Norfolk station and turned WCMS into a country powerhouse. Ray Arman, who was Cy's operation guy. Margaret Mayer, bookkeeper extraordinaire. Glenn George was a true professional manager. And of course, there's Ted Kramer, the guy who put the modern country sound on the air. And those other marvelous talents of Cy's station that made Cy's station sound so great, like Don Owens, Connie B. Gay of WARL, Joe Hopple of WCMS, and Uncle Don Ray of KCKN. Cy was a generous person, sometimes to a fault. It was not unusual to have one of his air, air staff from years before who had suffered some sort of hardship ask for help and then end up back on the air, much to the distress of the station's PD. The same was true of some old salespeople who also got back on staff after many years of being away. But the most amazing story was that of an old client who had run into hard times, so I heard about it, brought him out to Kansas City, and set him up back in business. What was his rationale? All these people were considered family. Sai was not perfect. Sai had a temper. And Ted reminded me of the time when Cy and I had a very heated discussion. At the end, when both of our tempers were at their peak and we were just sitting there staring at one another, just then, an engineer who thought we were through knocked on the door, opened it, and said, Mr. B, I want to talk to you about my raise. His timing could not have been worse. However, on balance, Cy was a marvelous man just to be around and wonderful to work for. As a young man, Cy worked in the wholesale grocery business and later when asked about his success in radio, he often said, it's not complicated. Selling advertising is like selling poultry and eggs. You give your very best product and get your very best price. And this mindset carried over not only to radio sales, but also into programming. Give your advertisers and your listeners your very best product. If Cy were here to accept this honor, he would gratefully acknowledge the contributions made by his employees, managerial, office, sales, engineering, and on air. But most of all, 
by the appreciation and loyalty of the country music audience. In Cy Blumenthal's memory, thank you all very, very much. A member of the Country Music Association of Texas Hall of Fame, the Country DJ Hall of Fame, and the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Celebrating